and welcome once again to the Dwarven Tavern. I am your host, Lyric, and this is... Dr. Jeff Bowen. And today we are going to be doing a talk. This time we're going to be discussing what to achieve in-game. Now, there's a lot of... I mean, it's, it's usually assumed that when it comes to role-playing games, the end goal is to earn money of some sort, to earn gold. So we wanted to talk about the importance of including other goals, other achievables that you can have in your game. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, I saw someone had posted a, a, a comment about what, what do you, how do you reward your players when they all, they've already bought everything in the equipment section of the player's handbook? Or, you know, whatever game system you're playing. What, what happens when you've already bought everything? What happens when you've run out of items to purchase? Yeah, yeah. And it, to me, I, I I never... It's it's That was kind of a foreign concept to me, to be honest. Um, well, it's never really happened for us. And that's yeah. saying something because I, myself, have been playing since I was a wee lass. So... Mm. A very tiny, a very tiny child. Like three months um, in utero. <laughs> and that's, I'm almost 27 years old, so that's at least 20 years yeah, of experience. Yeah. Very, very small. You were playing, yeah, earlier than that, probably 23, 24 years. I mean, I started them, well, we started them young. It wasn't just me. I can't take all the credit, uh, though I would love to. Um, uh, so, they never got, I mean, the, the whole greedy give me gold was never, that was, and here's why, <laughs> as I, as I articulate poorly, I rolled a one to articulate. Um, of course you did. The, the primary, I guess, goal of the dungeons is not just gold. I think, well, to, to back it up a little bit. Yeah, please. please um, I'm having a lot of, trouble articulating. I'm having trouble drinking my coffee, too. <laughs> a lot of games make the reward system out to be specifically gold. Like, they actually include it as achievables in the game. So, uh, for example, D&D, &D very specifically, has a system, like, we'll use first edition as an example because it's probably the best example. It is a good example. Um, they actually have a, um, oh my god, I'm, I'm blanking on what it's called, but uh, it's, a, it's a list of all of the different gold items depending on what monster you face, you get a... All the treasure tables? Yeah, treasure table, thank you. Um, you get a, an equivalent amount of loot. For example, mm -hmm. um, that means that uh, the dragon was the level like H, was it? Or yeah, yeah. Um, something like that, where you get like the highest amount of loot that there is because it's a dragon. Now, there are some cases where that makes sense, like a dragon. It would make sense to get loot from it because dragons are notorious for having all of these uh, loot caves. <laughs> Um, their their homes are made on the bones of warriors and also the gold from their pockets. So um, to get gold from a dragon escapade would make sense. Um, but to get gold from, say, a horde of skeletons, that may not necessarily fit the bill because skeletons may not really have any gold on them. Wow. Uh, blue dragons are type H and S. Yeah, so um, to establish this gold equivalent to the monster almost always makes it, it actually does make it always assumed that you're going to get loot from said monster. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, any other game that you've played, like this was first edition, if you've played since first edition... Um, then you may still hold on to that uh, previous assumption that you're going to get gold from whatever encounter you're, you're going to face. And it doesn't right. even have to be gold specifically. Um, when we say gold, we're referring to um, all sorts of loot like uh, rubies or emeralds or, uh, you know, any other type of gem, jewelry and chalices and 
all of the stuff that may be made from gold. So mm -hmm. um, the problem with that <laughs> is that um, the situations in your game may be so different than what could be lined up from a book that to get an, an equation like that doesn't make any sense. Right, right. Because the the Dungeon Master has, you know, this this thing plan like a... Uh, in one game, I uh, I DM'd my story was uh, there was a plague uh, going on, and it was it was a weird plague that that struck in waves, um, and uh, if you if your feet were on the ground, you had a chance of getting the, the plague, and it was assumed to be magical. But you know the goal, their goal was very self-evident and that mm. would be to stop the plague had nothing to do with treasure right had nothing to do with gold and there was a point where um they the the party came across this uh this encampment where everyone had died and it was a horrible off death and they started looting uh a couple of them a couple of them didn't but uh, because they were more concerned with the with the storyline yeah. And uh, everybody else was looting. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're going to buy this gold. It's gold. And, and I'm like, hmm, okay. So you're not learning anything about. Right. I mean, I didn't I didn't say this because that would be meta. And I hate meta. But, you know, I, I told them, you know, I told them, the, you know, that this is what they had. And, you know, it was, it was another, it was just a random adventuring party. Um, it was just a random party that was out doing stuff. They were probably also trying to find out, but they were all asleep when the wave hit. So they were all on the ground and they all died. And a couple of them found some of the clues that were there on the site, but they were so preoccupied with yeah. what they were getting that they didn't. Yeah. And that's the, that is the general, that is the general flavor of uh, a lot of my games is that um, only, only one game I think that I have played uh, that I have DM'd for has uh, even even remotely uh, whispered of uh, vast treasure, and you and you're actually in it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm trying to think, and all of the games that I'm in yeah. are preoccupied with survival. Um, Life is enough, right? And that actually brings us to our first point, and that is that to make it out with your life is sometimes the best reward. Um, Sometimes it's the only reward. <laughs> um, and I think that's the, the difference between um, the games that I grew up with and the games that you grew up with, mm -hmm. is that you were born and bred from this generation, which is the first mm -hmm. first edition, Advanced D&D. &D. Yeah, where you got experience points for gold pieces. Right. So the, the goal of that game was purely the gold? The goal, <laughs> the goal of that game was purely goal-oriented. <laughs> the goal of that game was purely gold. So, <laughs> um, from coffee. that point it's on, coffee. it's the coffee. Fumble coffee. Um, they, from that point on, they're only focused on getting treasure as their reward. Right. My generation, um, specifically our gaming group, because I'm not convinced this is everyone in my generation of gaming. Mm. Um, we were raised on the idea of the story being the most important thing. And in story, in quests and adventures, to make it out to tell your tales was what was most important. Yeah. And surviving the encounters. I, I don't think I've had, and this is really gonna, gonna say a lot about nepotism in the Dorm Tavern, but I don't think I've had one character die. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not entirely <laughs> nepotistically oriented. Um, um, stupidity kills, you know, just like curiosity kills the cat, stupidity kills the character. Yeah. And uh, none of you guys are stupid. Well, we were ch we were children. We were yeah. there was a lot of situations where we were naive or I, I dice spoke ill of us and we could have ended up dead. But mm -hmm. um for some reason, it didn't like happen the, that way, and I don't. Of, the town of the crawling. If that was nepotism or not, that's up for. Uh... Well, the town of the crawling claws. I remember. Yeah, I'm, I'm well sure aware. <laughs> <laughs> they were like little bitty kids, and the town was beset by uh, a bunch of disembodied hands 
that was crawling all over and their parents had to leave while they figured out what to do about the hands. Oh my God. Well, there was a quote from that game and I can't. Bye. Yeah. Um, um, it was like. You're horrible. Is what I was told <laughs> <laughs> by every one of my children. <laughs> Um, it was like Vi Lilla or something Dina, like that. Dina, 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 Dina Heidenfield. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was, uh, my sister's character, um, yeah. a gnome. But anyway, we found that campaign out and the, the riches, the spoils of that was that our village was saved. Mm-hmm. Period. That was like, we didn't get any gold from that. So, um, making it out with your life alone is sometimes the best reward. Yeah. And we talked about this in a previous campaign where sometimes you don't, a uh, campaign, a previous video, um, where the, the there's no win. There's the, everything that you could do, It you're going to end up with the short end of the stick. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the best case scenario in that situation is just to be alive at the end of the game. Yeah. So in that moment, you're not thinking about gold so much. Right. And that's 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 really true. So the dungeon master, or the game master, whatever game system you're playing, uh, the dungeon master has the ultimate responsibility of providing the characters with enough story content to ensure that they're not just well. The, I I don't like the term murder hobos, but that's it's what what it is prevalent. Um, there was something, uh, an addendum I wanted to add to this is that yeah. when we, we're talking about gold, but this could also be like credits if you're playing for, a, oh, right, yeah. like, or yeah. money or just the, wealth. yeah, that, um, monetary value yeah. is, is I guess what we should be calling it because this right. is true for any game. Yeah. Because in, uh, in D20 modern, uh, there's no, there's no money there. There's only your wealth check. Yeah. And if you can roll, uh, it's like a DC of your of your wealth depending on what you want to buy you have the money to do it but you know you're still wealth oriented yeah and uh rewarding characters is the ultimate question um what is a uh treasure type z treasure type z yeah. oh man i've never um, heard of that which i guess goes to show how much money i've gotten in the past <laughs> <laughs> um we do have a first edition campaign so uh, I'm not completely. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the one that has the gold in it. Oh yeah. Because you you they were they were on their way to try and find a wizard's tower, that was supposedly lost in the woods. Its its lo- exact location was lost to memory, because he was a wizard who developed a portal to gold. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. And, that was it's it's the end goal, but mostly because those characters and and that's that's something else that i wanted to add to this is that finding gold is also character related a character may not want the monetary value and it should be important to embrace different character ideologies uh for example um we have the first edition campaign Mm -hmm. um with taverniers josh and ian and myself with him as the dm and uh we have Sicarius, Drom, and my character, Myahan, which apparently is extremely hard to pronounce. Maya Han. Um, she is the only one in that campaign who doesn't really care for monetary value. Um, she cares enough for it to, you know, provide for her, but she doesn't seek after it. And the whole reason that she's in that campaign is because she's trying to follow these ne'er-do-wells who, who are... In the uh, truest sense, um, greedy. <laughs> yeah. um, but they're they're businessmen, if you if you will. Yeah, um, they, yeah, because well, yeah, and that brings up a really good point, you know, because they said, "What what do you do when you bought everything in a player's handbook?" Well, Drom, which is Ian's character, uh, the first thing he did when they they completed their first like major plot point, the first thing he did was he bought. Uh, the the uh, half the village half of the yeah the keep on a, we were playing through the keep on a borderlands and he went into the keep and bought the tavern and the bar and a couple of the inn I mean it was an inn and a tavern and uh, a couple of uh, rooms for rent and he bought that from the tavern master mm-hmm. well to be fair the uh, tavern master 
we uh, <laughs> we bought it from him legally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then we sealed the deal with death. Because yeah. um, <laughs> he was a bastard. He was a dick. But um, anyway, um, that, yeah, was, come. that was their goal. Their goal was to make the money to get the riches and to, to earn the spoils of war that was impending. Um, because they understood that there was a war coming and they wanted to make as much money as they can. And that was the point of the game, um, of, mm-hmm. of that particular campaign. Um, and that's, that's something that you can really delve into is what happens if you have a character who doesn't want money? What happens if you have a character who's only interested in uh, enough money to, you know, make a living? Or what happens if you have a character who's so invested in money he wants to be a king? Yeah. Um, and yeah. these are all character types that can bend the rules of money and monetary value in game to mm-hmm. your own will. Yeah, because um, I've had several players who uh in the in the distant past who couldn't play paladins or monks because they had no idea how to not be greedy they because you know paladins and monks they only keep enough to to survive and uh they they give the rest away and oh man that which was it was always funny for more. me because um our main campaign i play a half orc monk and his name is Akathan, and you've heard of him many a time and he is very true to the monk uh mentality and he is very wholesome and um he understands what it means to be selfless and he's very monkly strange how that works out um he is always offered gold at the end of any encounter that has some and he's like what do i need it for (laughs) And uh, the only time that he's taken gold was so that he could give it to someone else. Yeah. Because if he didn't get it, then here's he this bag of gold. Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's actually he's actually given his gold to the other players. Like he's like, okay, I want enough to buy a new weapon, um, because he was still very low level. He didn't have the established flurry of blows yet. Um, so he still needed something more powerful than his fist. Yeah. Um. And he's like, I need enough money to buy me uh, a soda got me um, from the Oriental Adventures because he's actually. I thought he used a Tetsubo. No, soda got me the the pitchfork yeah. that has the yeah yeah no. Um, but he um, because he wanted he wanted something that wasn't a knife. <laughs> right, right. Um, which that didn't really matter because it was still pointy. But, anyway, but it had a wee bit of reach to it. Yeah. Um, he had a quarter staff beforehand, so he was just building off of that expertise. Right. right. Um, but anyway, uh, he was given, he's like, I just want that money and then I'll give the rest to whoever wants it. And then I'm pretty sure Coyote and Ulf were like, we'll, we'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> the bard and the fighter were like, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just throw this away. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how it went pretty or much. Or he went, he gave it to the town's orphanage or something like that because... That's the yeah. type of monk that he is. Much much to the bard's chagrin. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll sing a sad song. I'll sing a song of loss and betrayal. <laughs> he gave the money to orphans. I could have bought new boots. <laughs> but yeah, and and so playing uh, playing the character to the to the non greedy. I'm still looking for treasure uh, treasure type Z. Um, oh, Will of the Wisp. Is a treasure type Z? Is a treasure type Z in in the uh, first edition player's hand, uh, first edition monster manual, monster manual. See there, treasure type Z. So it is, cough. I had to look through, all the way to the W's. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so treasure type Z is. 20% one to three thousand coppers. 25% one to four thousand silvers. 25% 1 to 4,000 Electrum, 30% 1 to 4,000 Gold, 30% 1 to 600 Platinum, a 55% chance of 10 to 60 Gems, Gemstones, 
a 50% chance of 5 to 30 pieces of jewelry, and a 50% chance for any three magical items. Wow. Now, <clears throat> the thing about the first edition, which is also, which is a very good example that you brought up, is that the first edition had two uh, values uh, for every type of magical item that you got. It had a gold piece value, and then it had a uh, XP value, the experience point value. If you kept the item, you would get the experience or the uh, the gold piece value in experience points. If you sold the item for the gold pieces, you got the experience point value for it. Yeah, I don't like that very much. Yeah. But that's another reason that drives people for uh, the the money rather than the, the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing is, I generally do not allow magical items to be sold in game. Uh, I do not have... I've got a couple of hedge wizard shops here and there where you can get like uh, a minor potion of healing or two, uh, maybe a, maybe a something that's blessed or something like that, a couple of scrolls. But magic in, in my universe is so very closely guarded that it's usually not available to the general public. Uh, it's, it's all found and, yeah. uh, traded amongst players and uh you know other than that you can't you can't go into a you know you can't go into a, a you know a medieval walmart and say i would like a, a staff of the magi um no that's not that's not a thing <laughs> um even if you've got a mountain of gold you know you can't you can't buy things that aren't there so another point that is being made here is that uh the availability of the treasure is not as available as it's made out to be yeah so uh that's something on the dm definitely is oh, yeah. is to know i mean not just with gold but with magical items mm -hmm. what is appropriate to give your characters and right. like you can still give your characters gold for defeating say a um a basilisk or uh, a dragon or a, a known hoarder um mm -hmm. uh someone who a monster that likes shiny things like goblins like you you clear out a goblin yeah. hoard chances are you're probably going to find some some stuff that you could use yeah. but um like that's up to the dm to understand what monster equates to what money yeah um yeah. and the the dungeon master's guide has that but i don't really think that it takes every situation into consideration and how could it in all honesty right yeah it's 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 more of a set of guidelines as yeah. they say so and, uh, yeah it's it's on top of the dungeon master it's it's on the dungeon master to make sure that despite what the guidelines say it's not appropriate for most situations yeah because there were there were many times when uh i was dungeon mastering these guys and they would uh, come across a monster out in the field that had a very high treasure type or a very high percent chance of having uh, a hoard of something. And it didn't have anything on it because it wasn't home or some other thing happened and or something that didn't normally have treasure did because it was in a place where there was treasure. So uh, common sense and logic has to supersede all the, all the rules um especially you know if when you're when you're talking about the the infinite variables possible in in universe uh which is uh it's all about uh quality over quantity because um when you're when your storyline is when it is the tits <laughs> when it when the storyline is the cat's pajamas uh bees knees the bees knees um which bees must have really cool knees really I, cool knees i don't know why that is they cur the pollen they cur a pollen and the pollen is what makes us alive <laughs> sweet sweet nectar of insect vomit but um the uh the 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 quality of your storyline even if it's even if it's a one-off i mean she she ran a one-off over the holidays uh that was 
freaking cool. I mean, it was really, really cool. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. It was it was amazingly cool. It was a one off. Uh, our characters went in. We were in. We were out. It wasn't a uh, it wasn't a, an enormous campaign. It was a one off, and uh, there wasn't any money involved, was there? It was just surviving, right? Uh, I can't remember. Maybe. I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> But uh, yeah, there was we were we were hired to do something for the this town, and when we got there, uh, something else happened, and we found that we were you know looking at this uh, this ancient spirit that could have you know snapped his fingers and killed us, but he just went on his way instead, and we we're like oh 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 to be alive, <laughs> hey there it is. I don't remember this game. <laughs> what game was this? It was it was uh, it was uh, uh, Krampus. Oh yeah, <laughs> we played. <laughs> I forgot all One of the all greatest about games that. I've ever played. Like, what, what is that? I forgot. I run that. so many <laughs> fantastic games. I have to be more. Specific. I forgot all about that. <laughs> yeah, we. Um, you remember we, we were playing the uh, the elves of Nordland? Yeah. Well, it was. Uh, <laughs> um, it was a uh, secret Santa or a white elephant or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's called that, yeah. Um, but uh, we did that instead of with presents, we did it with characters. And then I was the dungeon master, and uh, these guys had to figure out, uh, you Where know, the bodies were going or something, right? Like the, there was there were bodies being, you know, taken from the. Uh, they were dug, they dug themselves out. I mean, the the holes in the graves were dug out from the inside, and we were like, okay. Oh. <laughs> Zombies. Okay, yeah. that's, that's fine. We're we're first level. We can we can you know do zombies. We didn't say that in game. <laughs> but um, the whole point it's of meta. that game was, uh, I mean, the whole point of the game was not known to them. They were they were trying to figure out this puzzle. But what was happening is that they were under a test by Krampus to find out if they were good, if their village was deserving of the the good tides that spring would bring. And uh, they saved the village from the, the zombies and Krampus left. And he's like, yeah, these guys are good. And believe it or not, this is the first I've heard of this test thing. <laughs> she didn't tell us that this was a test. She just said he looks at, he looks on and moves on. And we're like, oh, thank goodness. That, uh, we're not dead right now. Yeah, so their, their reward was in game and it was to, to see summer, to see spring. And um, didn't know that. Not until just now. You, <laughs> you heard it here first. Wait till I tell everybody else. Um, and and that is it goes. The life is what was most important. And mm -hmm. um, actually, so, it was more than life itself. I mean, Krampus is a that's a soul creature that that deals with your eternalness. He gonna get you. The eternity. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh. Oh. Yeah, he would like that was it was uh, he was a uh, would you call him a lesser deity or just a straight deity? Um I would consider Krampus a Krampus. It's Krampus. Krampus. I know Krampus. Krampus. I'm American. I, anyway, language is is Phenomenal. organic. Um <laughs> I would consider him like a demigod. Yeah. Um See, demigods to me are Creatures made from both mortal and immortal yeah. beings. Definitely, a, definitely a, a, an outsider, a higher entity with some with some power. Yeah, but uh, yeah. But yeah. anyway, um, <laughs> the things you don't know. <laughs> um, I'm sure he's a monster in a monster manual somewhere. He is but... a monster to the bad guys. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> um, but anyway, Limony. he. Uh, you mentioned quality over quantity, and I think it's that goes for the loot itself too. Mm -hmm. um, sure. it, it's like quality is is definitely your life is the most thing that it, it's the thing that has the most quantity, quality, and uh, words. Got to say them right. Yeah, you got to. Um, you don't have to, but it makes it easier to understand <laughs> what you mean. Quality, your life has it the most of. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But there's also when it comes to your actual like loot and stuff, um, which is a, a brand store that you'll find in my campaigns. Loot and stuff. 
Um, that would be actually really cool. Like loot and stuff. Loot and stuff. It'd be really cool. Like uh, gaming company. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, credit me if you use that. <laughs> Um, but when it comes to, when it comes to your gems and stuff, if you make it vastly more superior than a bunch of gold, then make it just that. Like, for example, I have a character, Brook, who I've mentioned several times. He is a rogue, so he's always off after that gold. And, uh, Ian's character is named Silence and, um, Silence Cole. And he has a very large ruby. <laughs> and Brooke, Brooke wants it. Brooke knows about this very large ruby. <laughs> not, a, not a good thing. Because uh, Brooke is a, he is a, it's another hard to pronounce character Brooke. name. She likes the hard to make, because with Brooke you have to, you have to actually, anyway. <laughs> um, with, uh, with this guy, he's like a rogue, but she's playing him very differently. She's playing him like a, more of a bully uh, he like wants thug. he's the type of kid that would hang you from your underpants and steal your milk money yeah and tell you he's stealing it from you <laughs> yeah, and if I'm you, taking you, your milk money I'm taking your money <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh okay oh. <laughs> and that's 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 that's, yeah, yeah. that's he's the bully on the playground yeah um and uh silence knows he's a jerk and silence likes to be mean back so every now and then he'll rub it in his face and he's got the very large ruby and Brooke can be like, just you fucking wait, man. I'm going <laughs> to get that wait. from you. And it's evolved the campaign. Take it and rub it in its face. Silence and Brooke somehow got separated. Like that campaign abruptly ended because we're no longer friends with some of the people that were in the game and yeah. times change and... <laughs> like uh, they do. And we, we don't play it anymore. So these characters were freed up to go explore the world. So Silence went off on his own. And Baruch hasn't been played since recently. And he was in this... We, we have the arena where we buff up our characters in between games. And they can just, you know, fight for funsies. And Baruch found himself in this situation, befriended the people in charge, and is now on a pirate ship to go find silence. <laughs> and that, that money... That money... That campaign is completely money-driven. But it's done in such a way that the only thing he wants is that very large ruby. And it's just one thing. Yeah, that's all he wants. That's all he wants. And then he's going to rub it in Silence's face. And then he's going to go cash it in. <laughs> yeah. Because he's looking at his ruby and gold's passing by. He's like, yeah, that's that's fine. That's fine. I, I want that. That's, that's <laughs> good. Yeah, okay. I'll take that's Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's it. Yeah. It's all, even on his map. He's marked... Like a, di a diamond shape thing, a, a key note, a little thing on the map. Like, this is where the ruby is. Yeah, the You're ruby. going here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the the whole point uh, is um, and uh, that that uh, the, the story should supersede the greed. And, uh, and the only way you can do that is to make it interesting to even the the most murderous of hobo, um, murderous, murderous, Go with it, why murderous not? of hobos in in the group because if they have something that they that they're really interested in other than money, um, they will they will do one of two things they will either uh, divert their attention to what's really important or they will quit the game <laughs> and then the problem will solve itself probably yeah, garbage that takes itself out as they as they say often on facebook apparently um i think <clears throat> that if you can divert a murder murder um if you can divert their attention that should be your number one goal yeah. as the, the dungeon master because when they're only focused on money, then that's what they are. They're a murder hobo. Because you're rewarding them with something that you're giving they, them bad behavior treats. <laughs> you're, yeah. And you're when you when you divert a murder hobo's attention to something that's more important like the story, then you have given yes. them a gift that keeps on giving because then they realize that there's more to life than just killing that merchant and taking his gold. Yeah. Um <laughs> like you can have fun stories like we have like when um our uh when when our own very our very own murder hobo when he found a scroll and opened it up to the the magistrate and uh turned out it was a scroll of owl bearing 
uh, yeah, the uh, the the magistrate turned into an owl bear. And, and, uh, and like that, he was like, "Oh well, I guess that's not as valuable as I thought." <laughs> yeah, and hilarity ensued, <laughs> especially when he was trying to secretly call for you out the window. Yeah. That was great. Guys, hey, guys, persist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fun! Um, that really was enjoyable. But uh, when 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 they when they get the idea. That, that money, that gold, that the accumulation of wealth is no longer the most important thing. Um, and that's not saying that you gotta you gotta be a meta DM. Like like this guy goes into a, a tavern and he kills the tavern master, the innkeeper, whatever, and takes his gold. Well, in my campaigns, if he was able to do that, I would let him. Even if the the tavern master had some very vital information that he needed to give, that's his own fault. That's yeah, that's that's your problem. Now you don't know what's going to happen, and and that so that's that. But there is a very little, a very slim chance that um, uh, I would do what others might do in that they would make it like, well, okay, well he was a werewolf. Well, you can make it a side that. note, and um, like if the if they end up killing someone who had very vital information from that point on you can roll percentile dice out on the chance of whoever they meet and actually talk to actually knows that bit yeah and then yeah. you can you so, know because if the information has to get gaming. through yeah if the information has to get through uh you got to do it somehow so there would have to be a different source of that information but don't make them regret what they've done as a punishment because that just gives them a bad uh, it, it teaches a bad lesson. Well, I mean, they should regret killing someone who well, yeah, didn't you, deserve to be killed. <laughs> yeah, you tell them, tell them the truth about what happened. You know, if they should happen to see the guy's wife and children or whatever, um, then, then they could regret that. But um, I would try and draw their t- attention away from that particular behavior by showing, not because, not for punishing them, um, like... Uh, here's a good example of, uh, of a bad lesson learned. I had a character, actually I was DMing for a guy in an entirely different campaign and something bad happened to him to, as a plot point. So when he was dungeon mastering for me in a different campaign, he made all kind of crap rain down from the sky. And I mean that literally. He had my, my kingdom was beset upon by dragons and it salted, they, had, they breathed salt. And they salted Damn. my kingdom. And he said, well, you shouldn't have killed my friend in the other game. It's like, wow, that was freaking Metazilla. Oh, my God. And I, I don't think I've ever played with him again. I um, wouldn't. Yeah. That's, that's a that was, dick move. It was a totally dick move. And and that's why you don't want to do that. Because, uh, you know, there's there's other ways of, of uh, dealing with people who do bad things in, in game. Which that really didn't even apply because I wasn't a player; I was a DM. Well, I mean, uh, if you if you're salty, for lack of better words, uh, yeah. because another DM has killed your character, and then it is on you to play the next round as the dungeon master. Uh, that game's no longer relevant and should not be included in any sort of punishment <laughs> or anything. If you've yeah. got a problem with how your DM is playing, talk to the actual person. Can't talk to the guy. Yeah. Be like, hey, Dad. Well, he may not be your dad. My dungeon master is my you can dad. Call me dad. Hey, dad. You know. A lot of people. I really know. hated how you did that thing in the last game. Oh, we? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but really, you would have listened to me. I would have. I would have listened. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. That was kind of a dick thing to do. But I've never. You've never done that. Have I well, ever done you've a dick never thing? been a bad DM. Okay. Well. But no. if I had been, they could have told. They could tell me about it. You know, I really hate it when this thing happens and. Why do you do this every single well, time? Let's use let's use Ian as an example because I actually have talked to him before. Mm. Um, there was a the, the campaign where uh, most recently where we were followers of Cord, and I was really upset that my character who had somehow become the main character I wasn't quite sure how it happened. But she was um, cool. Um, she I was really salty because I didn't get the last word with the the villain. Um, I wanted, I wanted to do something really cool. I wanted to, to, cause I'm cords, um, 
secretary. <laughs> what is it called? <laughs> High priestess? Yeah, I was, no, no, like there's an actual a champion or something the like champion, that. champion, yeah. I was Kord's champion, and I was the, <laughs> the mortal spokesperson of Kord. And, <laughs> and grabs the um, villain and goes, and that's why, oh, she's dead already. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to punch this Aboleth in the face and have the final word by saying, you know, Kord sent me or something really stupidly heroic. And I ended up just punching him and he blasted me away. And then I swam up because we were in the water and I had water breathing on. I had like cast a spell for water breathing. I swam up to him and I punched him again and he started to convulse and like have cracks in him. And the way it was described, it didn't sound like he had died, but he was dying and starting to implode and he was going to explode and destroy all of the underground. And it took several rounds for us to figure this out. Yeah. And I explained this to my brother. I'm like, this was really unclear and I wasn't really happy with how it ended. And he explained to me, you know, he thought that it was, he thought that he explained it clearly mm -hmm. and that, you know, it was, you know, I, he only had like 36 hit points when I punched him with 88. And... <laughs> punched um, him in half, basically. And um, I definitely broke something. <laughs> and like... You know, he, he kind of explained it away and like, you know, kind of how a teacher won't fix the grade, even though, you know, it yeah. should be fixed. Like, oh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, but yeah, I understand <laughs> what you're doing. And uh, we were, talked about it. And while I wasn't really satisfied with the answer, I understood. And that campaign ended the way that it ended. And that's that. She and, was still pretty epic in it. I mean, uh, Sheila was was freaking epic. Even though she didn't get to say that last that one liner, uh, yeah, like yeah. I don't, I don't even know what I would have said. But had I been given the moment, I feel like that would have solidified that campaign as more epic than yeah. it was. Court says, "Die." <laughs> um, Court says, "You're a god wannabe, bam, or something like that." Um, a god wannabe. Well, he, he said, "Punch that god wannabe in the face." <laughs> That's what he told, told me to do. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's the oh, completely off topic. <laughs> Epic moment there. <laughs> but what I, what the point that I'm trying to make is that even though they didn't fix the campaign's ending, um, I it let my brother know that um, I had a, a little bit of an issue with it, and maybe next time when we game, it can be a little more. I mean, it was really in favor for the the characters. We yeah. really got off. With a lot of things going, like we could have died horribly very horribly. early on in that campaign. Horribly, and many points. And many points. So and, I guess each of our characters were out of their element. Yeah. But and again, in this campaign, uh, the whole thing wasn't about gold. Our Ooh. characters were hired by Josh's uh, bard to be his bodyguard while he investigated the Underdark. And after a certain point. For my characters, like I don't, I can't speak for the rest of the characters, but for my character, very specifically, it was no longer about the gold. It wasn't really about the gold to begin with, because since I was a cleric of priestness, <laughs> I was a priest of cord. I'm just forgetting all of my words. Um, I was, uh, <laughs> I was a cleric of cord. And my main goal was to spread the word of cord, and I knew that they didn't have cord in the Underdark. Yeah, so I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll go for gold, but I'm really there for cord. And then after a certain point, I was more concerned with my friend's well being rather than my client's pockets. Yeah. So uh, after a certain point, Sheila did not care about the gold at all. Right. And that was the same way with my character, yeah. you know, Thrinder. He was just like, okay, well, I've got nothing else to do. I'll, I'll go down if it pays. Sure, that's that's great. But it sounds like a great adventure, uh, which it turned out to be. It was a dangerous adventure. but As yeah. all get out. <laughs> Ooh. But um, yeah, yeah. It, and it wasn't really about the gold. The gold being paid would have been nice. But it didn't really matter because we were part of a society. We called, um, and you are free to use this, but um, we were... Uh, in the church of Cord, and what we called the church was the arena. So the arena had plenty of food and yeah. and friends, and we made profit just fine. Like it wasn't like we weren't bad off. We were just 
looking for maybe more means to supply the arena. Yeah. And it, it didn't work out that way. And it was fine because what was most important was that we made it out with our lives. We made it out with our lives and we stopped an evil god wannabe. Yeah, tw twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We stopped the, the Drow Queen, who was not a Drow Queen, turned out to be this um, other planar scorpion thing. Yeah, it was like Devastation Scorpion that yeah. was a high-level cleric as well, or well, sorceress. Punched that to death. Yeah. And then we also destroyed the Abeleth, which punched that to death. <laughs> the whole point of this is that there's more than gold at stake if you're a good DM. Uh, if you if you take the time to give content to your games, then you don't have to worry about your players just seeking the gold. I mean, they might, but there's other things that they will be concerned with other than just how much wealth they can accumulate. So if you need to reward them, give them stuff, you know, uh, but there, there's other ways of rewarding them. Yeah. Um, letting them live. That's a that's a. That that's is a, big a one. damn good reward, that's a, that's if you a, ask that's me. That's a big one right there. Um, and uh, so, you know, the, if the game's well-balanced and all that stuff, uh, it'll work out. It'll work out that way. I think another thing to keep in mind is to make sure, and this is just recapping, is to make sure that your characters are getting money and things of monetary value uh, more equivalent to what they, like, deserve rather than what the book says because oh, the yeah. book is not yeah i hate that i mean reason. if you're going to be a rules lawyer that's great but the book is honestly not the be all says all like we have says i'm going with it it's whatever um we have a bunch of house rules because there's a lot of things in the books that we honestly don't agree with that's true and that's you true. can do that with your money and, as yeah. well For, well especially the money because i that's one of the things that i always hated when i when i found the part in the end all be all three, there you go uh <laughs> end all be all. Ah! um <laughs> the the uh, 3.5 dungeon master's guide says how much uh, wealth your character should have accumulated at what level and and if, how much wealth you should find per encounter and how much uh, how much how many encounters your character should have before when before they level up between levels and that kind of formulaic behavior it just sticks in my craw because mm. um, there you know life's not fair yeah. And and it doesn't mean you have to be a jerk, but it does mean that every situation is different. And if you make it formulaic and um if if you make it formulaic and predictable, then every single drop of of uh mystique blood has been drained like, you know, a skinny victim of a fat vampire. Wow, that was graphic. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, if if they know what's going to happen, it's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm seeing this thing, and it's worth this much, and so all I need to do is uh, have one more encounter. So I'm going to wander around for a while until I get this other encounter. And then I can level up, and we'll get out, blah, 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 and it's all laid out in front. Of what? That's not, that's not fun. That is mm -hmm. no fun. It is zero fun. Um, something else that you can give instead of, wealth is experience points and that's what should be given more often than not um for example in pretty much every campaign that we've got um we reward for good role playing because that's what drives the story as well as a session bonus because you know the session is important so mm. when we game we get session bonus role playing and then uh you know whatever kills we've got or yeah Anything creative or spells or anything like that. Right. Um, and that alone, to me, that alone is enough reward. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need to get gold for every campaign or... Yeah, uh, you, can even, you can even quiz them and uh, see what, you know, it's like, okay, uh, that, that'll be it for tonight. Um, what have you learned? You're a dick. Level up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or more appropriately, uh, what have we learned? And they give you the answer that's kind of what you were looking for. And then you can you can award them with a level or, you know, if they because that that tells you a couple different things, how much they were paying attention, how well you delivered the information. 
Um, is this saying that you can give... This is a the table uh, 12-4 character wealth by level in the Pathfinder uh, first edition book. And it's mm-hmm. a chart of gold pieces that you get at a certain level. Is this saying that you get this per I think level? it's I think it's saying um, treasure I'm, value I'm not about that. Character wealth by level. Um, so uh, let's see here. Because I was gonna, I was going to give another reference to it, a different game system other than first edition in D and D, and that's very disappointing to find out. Because <laughs> again, we don't do that here at the tavern. Yeah. And you are free to use our rules. Um, we don't mind. We actually encourage it because we're we like these rules because there are rules, um, and we also. Like okay. we, we like them because they're our rules. They're also the, our rules because we like them. <laughs> okay. Um, table 12-4 on page 399 of the first edition Pathfinder is uh, how much gold, uh, how much wealth that the uh, in, an NPC of that level will have. Oh, gotcha. Well, that's uh, not bad. It's not bad. Um, so if you if you encounter a twentieth level fighter, he should have eight hundred eighty thousand gold pieces worth of gear. Damn. Yeah. And. Uh, Good because I was I was worried for Pathfinder for a second, but um, these are kind of outdated now that the second edition has come out. Kind of. Um, you'll have to cover that in one of your uh, videos. Yeah, I haven't I haven't gotten to that point yet in the uh, review. The next time I'm talking about uh, magic. Ooh. The magic chapter, which is Fun. big, and it's really cool. It's really cool. I really like it. But um, here it says, and you know the the dudes at Pathfinder are pretty cool about their uh, their rules uh, because it says be careful awarding NPCs this extra gear though, especially at high levels where you can blow out your entire adventure's treasure budget in one fell swoop. Ooh. Which is one thing I don't have. I don't have a treasure budget. Well, you find what you find, you get what you find, you get what you can, you carry what you may, and that's that's where it is. And if they find the wizard's tower that opened the portal to the elemental plane, uh, a para elemental plane of gold, then uh, that killed him. Legend has it, because um, you don't want to open a plane of infinite something that's not something you can breathe. <laughs> And uh, in this case, it was uh, they. The legend had it that he was. It was uh, the plane of uh, uh, Earth plane that was all gold, and that's what he was searching for in his tower. And uh, the legend has it that he found it and drowned himself in in the very thing that he was searching for. Uh, that's what the legend is. Whether that's really what has happened or not has yet to be discovered by these guys. Um. But I'm just going to make sure that my companions, who are like brothers to me, um, don't get themselves killed along the way. <laughs> yeah, or deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's there's no budget, and if they find it, and if it happens, then they've got this. You know, they've got this uh, infinite portal of gold. Uh, then what? Well, there's a lot more experience and a lot more fun. Uh, adventures that they can have, even though gold is... No, I mean, it's just like, you know, why why do lottery winners keep on a living? Why you do know? billionaires exist? Why do billionaires exist? Why do they, why do they keep, why do they keep trying to accumulate more? You've already, that, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, any one of the, the billionaires... Uh, they could be Batman, and then they choose to live the way that they do. Yeah, well, that's, that's their choice. But the thing is... <laughs> Um, well, I'm even, against even it. even Bruce Wayne was he was still running his companies. Well, the difference money. the difference between real life billionaires and Batman, <laughs> aside from the vigilante aspect, is that he we was. We don't know that. We he, don't know that there are no real life Batman. Batman. The difference is what I'm what I'm saying is that the he he was a very uh, well known donator to charity and oh yeah like he. Are you saying Bill Gates is Batman? No, he's, he's too he's too old. He's dark man. <laughs> but um, if I were a billionaire, I wouldn't be a billionaire anymore because I would be spending all that money for other people. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's hard to get rid of that kind of money because no, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not when you shop like I do. No, I would, I would, I would have all of the the, the homeless veterans. I would put oh, no. all of my but money. See, in all of that stuff would eventually make you more money. 
don't because want money from it. I've got all the money that I that's need. But that's the point. You can't get rid of it when you when you get yeah, the movie Brewster's Millions. He had to give away. He had to get rid of thirty million dollars to to earn to so inherit three hundred million. So and, easy. And he had a hard time doing it because get rid some of, of the things Selma that, of the United States some debt. of the things that he was doing was making him more money. And and it, I mean, but you know, it's neither here nor there. The 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 point is, I'm too giving. Is, <laughs> I'm too caring for that much money. Right. The point. The you are. You really are. Uh, the point is, is that uh, billionaires who obviously don't need anything else go and try and make more money because there are more interesting things to do than, Which, than just make money. It kind of gives to, it kind of gives the answer to the, the, the question that you brought up at the beginning, mm. which is what do you do when you've bought everything in the player's handbook? You buy it again. You, you buy the next town over, you buy this whole thing and suddenly you're in a war and it just like yeah. money can drive the story, whether you realize it or not. Because historically speaking, any time that there has been this enormous um, accumulation of wealth, there has been someone else who doesn't have it, who wants it. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's another possibility that, you know, somebody can come and try and take it. Yeah. Uh, actually, may, everybody would come and try and take it. And because, it, like your character could die. Yeah. And then suddenly another person who like the, the NPC that killed you has all the money now. And then you can roll up a character to get that money back. And it just becomes this this grand story of, we'll say, um, Callum with Callum the Great, uh, who has been who died on his pile of gold. And now you have to, to seek the, the castle of Callum. Which is this legendary castle of gold? Yeah, yeah. and so, use it to your advantage. Yeah, which is yeah. what we're saying. <laughs> Absolutely, that's cool. So uh, I think that's uh, I think that's about it for uh, for this discussion. I hope you found that the information was uh, something that you can use, or you know, inspired you for new ideas, find or, relevant, uh, expanded your horizons a little bit, maybe. Hopefully, yeah. that's what we're here for. So. So, on behalf of the entire cast and crew of the Dwarven Tavern, I am Lyric. I am Dr. Jeff Hammerhand. <laughs> and we wish for you to want for nothing but adventure. And at first I feared it, then, then I, I charged. charged. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next time. The time.